Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our fourth installment of Tuesday Talks. This is a chance for us to highlight topics and faculty that play a big part in what makes Great Hearts special. That said, I am thrilled to have a beloved teacher join me today. This educator teaches science with our Texas Academy to seventh and eighth graders. He doesn't miss a beat when it comes to engaging students and giving them a classroom experience full of curiosity, wonder, and joy. So without further ado, I present to you Mr. Mark Wollstenholm. Did Hello. I say that right? You did, yes. <laughs> Great. And I am America Geese. I apologize I didn't introduce myself. I am the marketing coordinator for Great Hearts Online. Um, so I will be interviewing Mr. Wollstenholm today. So, Mr. Mark, um, parents are always asking us how subjects like science are taught virtually. It requires a lot of hands-on work. So when it comes to labs and projects, can you give our audience insight into how this works in the virtual, the virtual school? Absolutely. Yeah, one of the one of the common fears for online school are, like you said, subjects like science uh, and how are the labs going to work? Um, we take this question very seriously because at the heart of a Great Hearts education is trying to uh, foster that sense of wonder and that depth of inquiry. And I mean, I'm a little bit biased, but I think that science is the perfect subject for that. Um, <laughs> some of some of my for fellow sure. teachers, <laughs> teachers, yeah, some of the teachers might might promote their own, but you know. I love the science. Um, so we want to make sure that our students aren't aren't missing out on any of any of those labs or any of those hands-on activities. Um, so whenever I'm planning lessons for seventh and eighth grade, I always start with the labs in mind. I'll look at the content and I'll try to to build lessons around um, labs that we can have the students do at home. Um, and our schedule is is uniquely suited for that because we have our students. Um, for science live two days a week, and then they have asynchronous time where they can work on those labs and those hands-on assignments. Um, to make sure that we can facilitate those activities in those labs, I try to make labs that use as many household materials as possible. Um, so, you know, simple things that you would have in the kitchen or that you could easily find at a grocery store. Um, and we'll let students know a week in advance what they'll need. Um, I received some feedback last year. Our students said, you know, I had no idea how much cardboard I was going to need for this class. Mr. <laughs> um, but there are there are materials that students don't have readily available at home. And so what we do is we actually send them a science kit at the beginning of the year that has a lot of those materials that we don't expect them to have at home. So, for example, 
um, our seventh graders in physical science, they'll receive, um, they'll receive beakers, they'll receive graduated cylinders, um, so they can measure things accurately. We send all of our scholars a scale that's able to measure in grams so that we can do more labs that, that look at weight and we can get scientific measurements like that where you know a lot of scholars might not otherwise have that. Um, we also have some units that we want to make sure they can do labs um, in a safe way without household materials. So for example, our electricity and magnetism unit, we don't uh, want them just you know going rogue with the electricity in your house. So we'll send to them uh, these kits that have switches and they have battery packs um, and they come with light bulbs. So we can assign labs where we're having them build their own circuits at home. Um, we'll send them a pack with different types of magnets in it so they can work with the magnets. Um, we'll send them pH strips so they can test the acidity or how basic something is at home. Um, and we haven't forgotten about those eighth graders too for our earth science class. We'll send everybody a uh, weather kit so they can put this up in their yard and then you know for some of their assignments they'll be going outside and they'll be looking at the weather themselves we can track uh patterns over the year and then graph those things giving them that that hands-on uh first-hand experience doing those things um our eighth graders will also be receiving kits with fossils in them so this year this is this is a dinosaur bone that's been petrified um and so they can get their hands on these things and they can they can um examine them with magnifying glass, they'll get those too. Um, so a lot of those materials that, that you might not have at home, we provide to you. Um, and then the rest of the stuff, we let the scholars know in advance what they're going to need um, for the upcoming week. So it might be like, hey, next, next week you're gonna need an orange or you'll need, um, you know, you'll need toothpicks for this. So make sure you get that over the weekend. Um, uh, and then that gives them time to get those materials in advance. I love that. Yeah, I can see how the kids would have a blast putting that all together. Um, and then what what excites you most about teaching science? What do you look forward to in the classroom? Yeah, so I, I love planning those labs and those hands-on activities. I love looking at the content that I'll be teaching that week and figuring out how, how we can get the scholars working with their hands, putting those those principles and those uh, that information to to work. Uh, and so I love coming up with different ideas for labs for the kids to do and then seeing what they come up with. So we have we have a lot of scholars who go above and beyond um, and just build these these fantastic contraptions and labs and really dig deep into the material. Um, and so I always love to see what they come up with. Um, in fact, at the end of the year, last year, I went through some of our old assignments from throughout the year and I put together a highlights reel uh, where I kind of showcased some of those some of those great um, assignments that scholars turned in and we showed that to the, them as a group and, and they absolutely loved it. Yes, I'm glad you brought that up because I think we're going to pull that up so that um, our audience can see this. These are some of the projects that our middle, middle schoolers turned in last year. Good morning, scholars, and welcome to Mr. Walston Holmes Lab. As you can see, he's moving fine print. So say hello to the tank now. fun. I hope you learned something and I will see you in the future. That's amazing. I have to tell you science isn't my favorite subject, but that video makes me <laughs> want to go back and learn science. 
Well, that's um, good. I always, <laughs> always want to inspire people. Um, and when you see when you see the video, you see a lot of diversity in different things. So like some of the assignments I had the scholars do, I had them make um, for our physics unit, I had them make different cars out of different vegetables or, or fruits yeah. in their house. Um, we do we do egg drops and things like that. And you can see there's like a wide variety of approaches that the students are able right. to take. Yeah. And part of that is that the online at home setting gives them a little more autonomy because um, instead of me providing them with materials in the classroom, I say, you know, go go look in your house, find materials that you have available and see what you can come up with. Um, and I found that this this gives them a little more freedom and it also makes it makes it more feasible to have labs more often than in a traditional um, in school setting. So, um, you know, I taught I taught at brick and mortar for a number of years before I moved to Great Hearts Online. And it takes a lot of planning and preparation to make sure you have enough materials in the classroom for the scholars, for everybody. Um, and then it's, you know, a lot of logistic coordination, making sure you have the time, making sure everybody gets everything they need. Um, and in the online setting, I find that I'm actually able to do more labs more often um, since the scholars are doing it at their house. That's really interesting. I, I love that you said that because it is, um, yeah, it is a challenge. I also was in the brick and mortar and just managing that many students with supplies takes a lot of time and patience. <laughs> um, so you had mentioned to me that you use something called Nearpod as um, software to help you sort of bring assignments to live uh, to life. Can you explain what this is and how you use it? I don't know that our families are all familiar with it. Absolutely. Yes, I I'm a big proponent of Nearpod. I love it. Uh, it's Nearpod is a website that enables me as a teacher to create lessons that are interactive with the students. Um, and it makes it makes lessons go more smoothly. Um, now, the way it works is I create a lesson during my planning time on Nearpod. And when I'm in class with the scholars, I will copy and paste a link to the lesson that I made and I will send it to the students in the chat. And they don't have to download anything. They don't have to do anything in advance. All they do is they click on that link while they're in class and it will take them to the page that I've made. Um, and then it'll bring them right into the lesson. So, um, so there's lessons. no need for families to create an account. No, there's no need to make an account. There's no need to download anything. Um, it's just, it's in their internet browser. Um, and so if I have a PowerPoint, instead of me share screening my PowerPoint in Zoom, it'll just pop up in their browser. Um, when I click the next button, it'll take them to the next slide. I can embed short answer questions where they type their answer. I can, uh, I can embed... Uh, kind of group discussion board questions where they all post different answers and that'll help facilitate um, and start conversations. Um, it helps me to track uh, track their engagement, track for understanding. We can do little short quiz questions in the middle so that I can see like, oh, I need to spend more time on this topic. Um, there's also little simulators. Um, they're called bet simulators where it's like a, a gravity simulation activity that I can pull up and then the kids can, you know, click around and do this little simulator in the middle of a science lesson to help um, help them wrap their mind around the concept we're talking about. I can embed videos that I've made in it. Um, it just really streamlines the whole process of, of online education and helps helps with engagement. Yeah, I love that. I mean, I think the engagement is important um, in the virtual setting. So it sounds like that software is great. Um, well, I love everything that you've shared. Um, we are, what, two weeks away from starting school, and I just wanted to know if you have any closing words or words of inspiration for our rising seventh and eighth graders that could possibly be in your class if they're in the Texas Academy. <laughs> yeah, get, get ready for a fantastic year. Um, you know, online education is a, a great opportunity, um, and like anything else, it's it's what you make it's what you make of it. So you know, come in with a great attitude, and if you want this to be a great year and you want to get in, engaged in your studies, then you're going to have a great time. Awesome, I love that. Um, so, 
Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Walstenholm. Next week, we are also going to have an educator, uh, Miss Michelle Mendenhall, who teaches music. And she can play more instruments than I can name. Um, and she's also a mom to great heart students. So I think her insight will be um, very valuable to our um, families. So I encourage you to tune in next week. And we are still accepting applications for the fall. So be sure to spread the word to your friends and family. Um, some grade levels are reaching that um, maximum capacity. So I encourage you to do that sooner rather than later. Um, but yes, we thank you for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you so much.